Hey, I'm Brad. And I'm Eva. And we are Breva Creative. Today, we're going to be dehydrating some herbs and making some lemon balm iced tea. Ah, oh, the perfect drink on a balmy summer afternoon. This is my lemon balm plant that we will be pruning today. We'll be trimming it so that it grows better in the future and also harvesting the leaves so that we can make some tea. So since I want to keep this plant, I'm trimming right above the spot where these tiny leaves are sprouting next to the big leaves. This means that it will branch and continue to grow healthily. You never wanna take more than about one third of a plant maybe half if it's a really big plant like this one, just to make sure that you don't overtax the plant and end up killing it. I've been ignoring these plants for way too long, so they're very overgrown. Usually I would try to trim it more frequently, but that's okay, more lemon balm for our tea. So this is the lemon balm that we just harvested, and this is my dehydrator. I found this on Amazon. There are a lot of options available. This one is kind of a medium size, which is what I was looking for. Something a little bit bigger than the starter ones. And it's nothing too big so that I couldn't shove it in a cabinet when I'm not using it. I also specifically wanted metal shelves so that it would last longer and the plastic shelves tend to warp after a couple of years of use. With lemon balm, like with any herb, you're going to want to pinch off the leaves and not put any of the stem in the dehydrator. The stem takes way longer to dehydrate and it gets really stiff and it's not something that I'm gonna use. So it's better for me not to even throw it in there. So we're gonna pinch the leaf off right at the base. So none of the thick stem is on there. It's okay to tear the leaves, not a big deal. We're gonna take all of those leaves and we're gonna throw them right on the dehydrator shelves. Just like that. Lay them nice and flat. Uh, if the leaves are curling one direction, try to curl them down. Not a big deal, but it makes it a little better. And definitely don't overlap things. You want there to be an eighth to a quarter inch of space between each leaf so that the airflow can get through and in between them properly and they'll dry more efficiently that way. So we're just gonna pick all of these leaves off of the stems and lay them on the dehydrator. To make sure there's space at the back of the dehydrator or where the air comes from. Sometimes it comes from below, sometimes from above. Mine, the fan is at the back, so it pulls air from the back of the machine through the machine, warms it up and dries things. So I want to make sure that there's a gap at the back so that there is air that it can pull through. If there's no air, it's gonna be way less efficient at dehydrating. It's gonna be hard on the motor of the fan of your machine and it's just not ideal. So just make sure there's three, four inches gap at the back. One other thing, I did not wash my herbs. I grew these myself, I know what's on them. It's not super dusty around here, so they're not very dirty. And I know that the flavor will be better with unwashed herbs. If you're getting yours from a grocery store and you don't know what they've been sprayed with, or you're growing them in a particularly dusty or dirty environment, go ahead and rinse them off really quick first, but make sure that you pat them dry. So it's kind of up to you. The flavor's better unwashed, but if you're worried about what's on them, go ahead and rinse them off. So now that we've got all of the shelves full, we're ready to start the dehydrator. So we close it up and I'm going to run these herbs at about 100 degrees. I've done 95 and it takes like four days straight of dehydration. If you're willing to wait that long, great. It's okay to do a little bit hotter 
not too hot, but a little bit hotter to just speed up the process. But you don't want to get above like 105, 110, because then you start to lose flavor because you're essentially cooking the herbs instead of drying them. But I'm going to put it at 100 so it doesn't take four whole days to do. I'm going to start with 24 hours and I will let you know how long it actually ends up taking to dry. Now our dehydrator has stopped. It's been the full 24 hours, and now I need to check and make sure that all of the lemon balm is fully dried. So in order to do that, you pull out a shelf and you pull out a leaf, and you just kind of break it, make sure it's nice and crispy sounding all the way through. There's no thick, floppy parts. And you want to check that a couple different places in the machine, just to make sure that everything dried nice and evenly. So this is crisping apart very nicely. I like the way it sounds. <clears throat> so now we are ready to put it in container. Anything that seals is fine. A Ziploc bag or a plastic container is great. As long as it's airtight, you're good to go. I put silica gel packets in my containers. I get these online. These are reusable, which is great. So when I've used them and they've absorbed too much water, I just toss them in the oven and they dry back out and I can use them again, which is amazing. So we're just going to put all this lemon balm in a container. Feel free to crush it up if you want or powder it, whatever is best for you and your uses. I like to keep it whole because that gives me more options later. I can crush it up later or I can powder it later. But the hole is kind of nice to start with, so that's what I do. I just put those little bits in there and squish them down if I need to to make room. There's plenty of room in this jar for everything in this dehydrator. So we're going to make some lemon balm iced tea. In order to do that, we need some lemon balm, which we just dehydrated earlier today. And I'm just going to take a couple pinches you know, enough. Just think about how much a tea bag holds and how much that flavors and something about that much, you know, a couple tablespoons. That sounds good. So we're just gonna do that. And then you wanna take your hot water, not boiling, just under the boiling temperature. And you just wanna add that to the leaves. And you just want to give that five to ten minutes to just steep and let the flavor soak into the liquid. So now that it's been the full 10 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and fish out these leaves out of the tea. Historically, lemon balm was used to reduce stress and anxiety, and aid in indigestion, and helps balance hormones. It can also be used as an insect repellent. It's also at this point that I'm going to add my sugar. If you're using a liquid sweetener like stevia or something, you don't have to worry about adding it now. Or if you're skipping the sugar, don't worry about it. But since I want my sugar to dissolve nicely, I'm gonna go ahead and add that now while it's hot before we let it cool down. So I'm just gonna add maybe a tablespoon and a half to that to see how that goes. You could also add a tablespoon or so of lemon juice if you want to heighten the lemon flavor and make it more of like a lemon balm lemonade. You could do that now as well. All right, now I'm just gonna let that cool down. Maybe I'll pop it in the fridge for a couple of minutes and I'll see you in a minute. All right, let's make some lemon balm tea. 
My tea has been in the fridge for about an hour now and it's nice and cool. So let's get going. Let us know what you think in the comments. And if you give this a try, tag us at Breva Creative on social media.